Hello, everyone. And if I was a pastor for a church, I'd say, come forward. <laughs> you don't have to sit in the back pews. At the Church of WordPress, everyone is welcome. So now I'm going to shift topics. Um, how many of you are out, How many of you are familiar with the 3-6 Mafia? A couple. 3-6 Mafia. For sure. They, they actually won the Academy Awards song a couple of years back. Uh, for the, the, the song was titled, It's not hard out here for a pen. Oh, that was well, the only job harder is being a Hustle and flow. Hustle and flow. <laughs> the only job that's harder is being a freelancer. We gotta go chase the work, we gotta do the work, we gotta maintain the work, build client relationships. And sometimes it's a struggle. It doesn't happen. The next speaker is Kyle Lafferty. He's gonna talk about a freelancer's guide to survival. Welcome, Kyle. Thank you. <sighs> Finally. Honestly, every time I talk at a WordCamp, I'm nervous for like the first, I would say, I would say the hour right before I'm talking, I'm getting this pit in my stomach and I'm freaking out. And then the moment I get to this point, I'm like, what happened to all that nervousness, you know? It's the weirdest thing. I've spoken so far at, at this is my fourth, second time here in Raleigh. And uh, I actually did one similar to this in Wilmington. Uh, a couple years ago, so there will be some similarities to that. But this is the Freelancer's Guide to Survival in WordPress. Um, my slides are actually on Twitter. Um, they're on SlideShare, so you can check them out there. And I shared them on Twitter with the hashtag WC Raleigh. There's my Twitter handle, at Laverty Creative, if you're wanting to check it out. What I am going to go over today all this fun freelancing stuff. And we're gonna get into that now. Who here is a, who here is a freelancer? Awesome, nice. Full-time, uh, full-time freelancers or kind of part-time, full-time, okay. I've been uh, doing the freelance thing since 2015. And a lot of this is kind of it's really just my own, I guess, experience as a freelancer, sort of failures, successes, and constant learning still from everyday stuff as a freelancer. Um, you never stop learning. You'll learn something new every day. Somebody's going to come at you with something. So it's always a good learning experience. I'm from Pittsburgh. I'm an Air Force veteran. I came to Apex, North Carolina in 2012. This, like I said, is my fourth time speaking, my sixth word camp. And right now I freelance for my own business, Laverty Creative. I have another website that's more veteran focused. Um, and that's mainly because when I got out of the military, I was really not sure where I was going to go, what I was going to do. I sort of wish I had a good resource with all of the tools and tips and tricks and stuff that I know now. So I created that in order to make that happen for people. Um, soon to be husband, I get married on May 19th. Thank you. <laughs> that feels good, thank you. Um, I mean, <laughs> you know, just the, uh, it'll be a fun experience. We're basically <laughs> already married, but now we'll make it legal, I guess. Got five kids. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a handful, yeah, absolutely. And you can find me on my website, LavertyCreative.com. If you go to uh, my slideshow, you should be able to click all the links and get to all those Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. What is a freelancer? It is a self-employed person providing a service or services, in this case here in WordPress, but not necessarily always in WordPress. I'm open to all things as a freelancer, though I primarily work in WordPress. Sorry, can you hear me? Sorry. Whoa, whoa. Hello. It's not working anymore. Technical difficulties. My bad. Testing, testing, testing. Oh. 
Uh -oh. Take the wood. I've heard the wood. Gotcha. Tell some jokes. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I don't have too many of those. At least none that I can say here. Well, yeah, that's my problem. Too. <laughs> so, I'm impressed by the fact that you've got five kids. Tell us about the kids. Oh, uh, so I have three. You know how that happens, right? <laughs> yeah. I know. Lots of practice, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I can, I could barely keep up at that many as, as well, so five is more than enough. Can you hear me again? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So f as a freelancer in WordPress, you can be any number of things, um, designer, developer, writer, maintainer of WordPress sites, digital marketer, SEO specialist, or all of the above. I'm kind of all of the above. I would definitely not consider myself an SEO specialist, though. And I'm kind of an okay writer, but, you know, don't judge me on that. Where do you get started? I never knew where to get started at first. I'm self-taught, actually. Um, when I, like I said, when I got out of the military, you know, I did some stuff before making my way back here to North Carolina, and uh, I, I was going for a computer science degree initially. That was my initial track, and I thought I should have a website for myself, and that's kind of where it all started for me with uh, WordPress. But the main thing for freelancing, where to get started, is get a plan, develop a process, and then proceed with that. Whenever I started planning, I looked around to see what others were doing. There's a lot of fellow freelancers out there that have already done it, that have great content, great websites, stuff that you can not necessarily, I would, you know, I mean, you're not going to copy anything, of course, but if you're trying to find where to get started, it's a good place to look and see what others are doing. Write down your goals. This is something I didn't do at the beginning, totally failed at that. My goal was just to be a freelancer, and I was like, yes, freelance. You achieved it day one. And here I was as a freelancer. What do I do now? Never had, any, never had any goals to begin with. I didn't start out that way, and I wish I would have. And it's important to write down goals so you can reach you know, one at a time, even if it's just a little bit at a time. It's good to write those down and get to them. Um, it's good to choose your niche, 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 niche. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Um, choose your area. And I wouldn't necessarily say you have to choose, but it's good to kind of start out that way. But you could stay open. Um, for instance, for me, I was dealing with somebody earlier in the week. It wasn't even a WordPress site. It was some page builder website on like webs.com. They called me about an error. And I don't know if anybody's familiar with webs.com, but, you know, it's just a uh, kind of, it's just your typical um, template setup site builder type thing, you know, sort of like a GoDaddy site builder. Um, he had an error, and I was open to it, and now he's talking about potentially getting a WordPress website. So you can operate in a specific area, but I would definitely say to stay open so that you can potentially bring on those people as a WordPress client in the future. And, and with developing a plan, determine your rate. Um, I'm not going to say what your rate should be. Depends on how you value your, value your time. This is definitely something at the beginning where I was a little too low on my rate. And probably just because I was starting out, I thought, eh, I should charge a little less so I can get people on. But that's not necessarily the case because you might not really be getting the clients that you want in that case. And you're going to be taking up a lot of your time doing things that you felt like you should be, feel like you should definitely be paid more for. So determining your rate is very important. How, what is the value on your time, essentially? I actually use a tool, um, and I didn't put it up here, but... 
It's uh, thenewschool.com slash how much. I think it's basically just a pricing thing. You determine, once you've determined your rate, you can click on, um, click on what type of project it is, enter the hours that you intend to work in the, uh, your hourly rate, and then you go through a set of questions, and eventually it gets you to a, uh, um, some numbers for what you should charge. And it gives you some leeway. It gives you the low end, which is basically just hours times your rate, and then it gives you the higher end, which you, know, you can kind of determine it from there. It's uh, the new school, and new is actually nu.com. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, I think slash how much. Um, define your uh, process, and this is a good thing. Just, I mean, for the purposes of documenting things when you're starting up, define a process for yourself. And stick to it, but have some flexibility on that. Um, dealing with any client, it's never going to be the same between people, so you're not, everybody's different, um, and everybody's going to need to be talked to, dealt with, handled differently. I mean, everybody wants different things and expects different things, so be flexible with your process, but definitely have something in place for you to stick to. And then proceed. Register your business. Create your website if you haven't already. Create case studies so that people can see your work. And promote. Promote everything. Get on social media, blog, all that stuff. You got to promote. Failure is the key to success. And I know this. Because I failed a bunch of times, unfortunately. However, I am here today giving a talk on how to freelance for WordPress. Though I wouldn't say that that's a successful thing, because maybe I'm not successful. I don't know. But I'm doing okay. Failure leads to success, and in order to succeed, one must fail. Not necessarily. I mean, you could have some success immediately, but you're always going to have failures along the way. Um, it's definitely the key to success, and it's okay to fail. I know this. Like I said, I've failed a bunch of times. But you have to accept it. You have to move on. You have to learn from it. And every failure, at least what I've done up until this point, when I have failed, I've written it down so that I can remember it in the future and always remember to not go back to that point. And I feel like that, that's a, a good thing to do if you're not doing it already. Um, learning the hard way. I learned the hard way. It can be tough, but sometimes that's how you have to learn to be a freelancer is the hard way. Like I said before, no, every client is different, and sometimes you're going to get fired by a client, or you'll feel that you failed them and maybe that they should move on to somebody else because you haven't done what you were supposed to do as you know, their developer or designer. So... Learning the hard way, you know, make sure you do learn from it. Pick up the pieces from there and make the necessary changes. Sometimes that's one thing that people don't do is to make the necessary changes after they failed or they don't necessarily realize where they failed so they don't make those changes. You have to definitely, definitely see what it is that you're doing and if you're like me, write it down and make the necessary changes so that it doesn't happen in the future. Where people fail. That would really suck to drop your ice cream cone on the uh, pavement like that. I don't know how anybody else would feel about that, but that would be awful. Common areas of failure. Take it in and try not to make these mistakes. So whenever I first became a freelancer, I actually became a freelancer, full-time freelancer way too soon. And going full-time too soon, you'll quickly find out that you don't have enough money to do the stuff that you need to be doing, like paying your bills. And that's definitely affecting your well-being. You don't want to do that. 
give it time, save up some money, find, find enough clients to make it to where you can be comfortable when you go full time, and then you can build from there. We heard this quote earlier, if you build it, they will come. This is true, but not right away. Can't just put your website up there and everybody's going to be like, oh, look, they could develop my website. That's definitely not how it works. It takes time, but you'll get there. Idea overload. This is definitely one that I had, I thought. Man, let me buy up all these domains that I think I have ideas for. And now all these domains are just sitting there with nothing on them, and I'm not sure where to go with anything. Idea overload is truly an unfortunate thing. It is where you can fail. Don't get your mind in too many places, because then you won't be focused on the place that you need to be focused. Taking on too much at once. Taking on too much work at one time can definitely lead to some serious failure. Um, it'll leave you in a position where you're not able to communicate with other clients, or when you are communicating, it's because you can't put out their, what they want on time. So don't take on too much at once, and just understand what your schedule should be so that you're not, you're not overdoing it, and you're not having to work 18 hours a day think, and just crushing yourself with constant work. And one of the major areas here is customer service. I've, <clears throat> I've actually failed at this one a lot because, like I said, it's really, you know, everybody's different, so dealing with them is, dealing with everybody's a different thing. And it's important to be responsive, communicate. <coughs> In the beginning, you know, communication was... Definitely not one of my stronger areas. Uh, customer service would have definitely not been a strong area as well, and it goes together. So definitely make sure that you are trying your best to provide the best customer service you can to your clients, potential clients. Be responsive, and you will not fail in that area. How to succeed. What can you do to succeed? Success comes down to you. You got to have the right mindset. Um, I was pretty lazy and unmotivated whenever I first became a freelancer. Um, I would still consider myself pretty lazy and unmotivated, to be honest with you. But I'm way better at managing my time and work now than I was before. Um, and having, that, having the right mindset to get it all done is important. You, you, you can be easily distracted, especially as a freelancer. More than likely you're working at home. There's all kinds of stuff going on around you. I work at home and my two little ones, two and four years old, are around me all the time, making noise, playing around. So here I am taking client calls with, <laughs> with kids yelling in the background. And, but you got to do it. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's how it's working for me. And I, I make sure that I get, get my work done as best I can. I have set hours for myself and you know whatever you need to do to make it happen but you got to have the right mindset regardless you know of I guess the position you're in definitely have the right mindset set expectations for yourself I didn't set expectations for myself at the beginning this kind of goes with goals as well but write down your expectations um, maybe maybe you have expectations that are in regards to how much you want to be able to make in a given month or per day. Um, if, if you want to get to that point, that's kind of put that on the goals list too, but write them down, set expectations, and it'll help you achieve what you're trying to achieve. Don't expect things right away. Um, if you build it, they will come, right? But not right away. Don't expect things to happen right away. When you put your website up, well, good job. Congratulations. <laughs> Definitely got to keep going from there, though. Um, you got to work at it. So don't expect things to happen right away. People aren't just going to come calling. Engage with people. Attend meetups, attend conferences. You're here at WordCamp. Talk to as many people as you can. 
you might find a potential client. I've found several at numerous WordCamps. Um, I have not been to the local meetup yet, but I would imagine that you could definitely find people there as well. Um, you might even run into people where they could do some work for you if you get to that point. And it's great to have stuff like this that you can come to, network, engage, and potentially find clients. Where to find freelance work? I definitely did not know where to find freelance work at first. And then, where are they, right? Finding clients, where are they? I had no idea. I was like, man, do I have to make cold calls? That would be awful. I don't want to talk to people like that. They're probably going to yell at me and hang up. My, uh, my fiance, she deals with that every day. She's a physician recruiter. She calls doctors and they yell at her and they're like, I don't want you to call me ever again. Hang up. Swearing at her and then she gets the ones that are like, yeah, this sounds like a good idea. I'll work, work with you. Where to find clients? Google it. Google is your friend. It always, well, maybe not always, but for now it will be. <laughs> um, Google it. Craigslist ad. I actually, believe it or not, I get a majority of my clients from Craigslist ads now because you have to pay for ads now on Craigslist. It's $5 for an ad for 30 days. I paid $5, put up an ad on Craigslist, and over the course of the next week, I got 20 phone calls from people about website stuff that they needed done. And, you know, just $5, that's it. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome. Before I had my Craigslist ads up, and there was just a ton of duplicates, and I got a call once a month, if that. So, Craigslist, even before, I guess, would have been okay, but now, you know, there's some more potential there since it's paid. Local Chamber of Commerce, I, I was, uh, I'm not still a member currently, but I was a member of my local Apex Chamber of Commerce. Um, you can put your business cards in there. There's all kinds of ad and mailer opportunities for your local electric bill, you know, your utility bill, um, all kinds of networking events that they have. Just stuff where you could potentially find people that want to work with you. Twitter is a great place to find potential clients if you're searching for the right terms. Um, WordPress gigs, WordPress jobs, those are a couple that I've searched on on Twitter. Or things like hate WordPress because somebody's angry at it. Um, maybe some swear words followed by WordPress because somebody's really mad at it. Um, they probably need help. You could be there to change that around for them. People are definitely tweeting about errors on their WordPress site and all that. So, uh, Facebook groups, this is a good one. There's a lot of good local Facebook groups here. Um, there's the North Carolina Small Business Bulletin, um, local small businesses, and the Triangle. There's a bunch of Facebook groups you could go in and post on, potentially find people that need a website. People are posting ads on there all the time um, for their own businesses, and you could potentially reach out through Messenger and find a new client. Um, sending out flyers. I have not actually done this before, but I've seen friends of mine do it, and it's worked for them. And... <laughs> If you're, I mean, if you're a, you know, if you're a designer or have somebody that's a designer that could, that could help you out with setting up or designing a flyer for you and sending that out somehow, um, whatever works. Host a workshop. This is actually something that I haven't done before, but I've had a bunch of people that I know do this. They've hosted free workshops at different places. And a lot of people end up showing up and then these people potentially turn into clients. Whether, regardless of what it is you do, you know, host a SEO workshop or a uh, copywriting workshop, um, 
how to do something in WordPress, anything. And you'd be surprised there's going to be some people that are interested. Um, you know, post that on social media that you're hosting your workshop everywhere that you can to get people to show up. And there's some real, real good potential there. And lastly, of course, cold calls and emails if you want to get yelled at. Um, <laughs> I don't necessarily want to say go ahead and make cold calls, but you could definitely do some emails. At least you're going to alleviate some of the yelling that way. Um, and in doing this, I would say to be consistent and uh, keep it up. So don't just email somebody once and think, oh, they're definitely going to get back to me. If you keep emailing that person, you're going to be in their mind eventually, and they're going to be like, all right, well, maybe I do need some website stuff from this person. They've annoyed me this much at this point. Sometimes that's the way people think. I had somebody tell me that. I emailed them a bunch of times, and they were like, you know, I just wanted to talk to you at this point because you kept emailing me, and, it was a, and you were really getting on my nerves, so I figured I'd talk to you. Now they're a client of mine. I don't get on their nerves anymore. You don't mention LinkedIn. Have you used that as a... Yeah, absolutely. LinkedIn, um, I mean, there's groups on there as well that you could definitely post in. I should have put that up here, but that was one of the, one of the guys I work with. He did a free SEO workshop, and he posted actually that on LinkedIn, and a bunch of people responded. So that's definitely another, another spot where you could find potential clients. I have a question, sir. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so, yes, you could take those flyers directly to businesses yourself. Um, you could mail them out if you, especially if you're a local member, if you're a member of your local chamber, you can get all the addresses, or you can even look them up in their directory, even if you're not a member, and then you could, you know, mail them out. Um, yeah. You know what you do, stuff like that. There's a bunch of services that'll do that. Post yeah. The all the listing. The return general. Yeah. Yeah, Vistaprint's a good one. You know, you could design your own and upload the, upload the design to a postcard and, yeah, send it out. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, make sure whenever, if you are using them, make sure you have everything placed correctly. Oh, yeah. For sure. So, th this is, uh, yeah, good question. Uh, <laughs> you could, if there's a, a local small business that you could potentially talk to, like a, like a coffee shop or something along those lines, even something like the Raleigh Beer Garden, you know, you could talk to them and see if you're able to host some sort of workshop. Because for them, I mean, that brings a little bit of business their way. And... In most cases, they'd be happy to have such an event at their place. And do libraries do it? That's another good one, yeah, library. The library, you have to be a nonprofit or not charging. But if it's free, right. you can definitely right. use yeah. their space. And they have, they even let you bring food in. They have Wi-Fi. Depending on the community, in the Charlotte area, a lot of the firehouses have community rooms that are Wi-Fi capable. And if there's a fee, but it's Real novelty. Like in Cabarrus County, it's 25 bucks. Use the room for four or five hours. Nice. And uh, here's uh, kind of my continued portion of the finding clients. Here's some links. These are some good Twitter searches for WordPress jobs, um, jobs.wordpress, WP Hired. I actually created a site that 
It's basically just an RSS feed of a bunch of different jobs and development and design and all kinds of stuff, all remote for the most part. There's some that might not be, but it's just kind of all in one place. Um, obviously, word camps, like I mentioned before, local meetups and other meetups, even that aren't WordPress related whatsoever, you could definitely find some potential clients. Uh, Digital Creative Leads, it's a website, but it pulls in a bunch of different, uh, you know, a bunch of different jobs from different job sites, including the two that are actually at the top. Yeah. Speaking in that same area, actually, the uh, in Apex every year they have festivals during the summer, the Pig Fest, the Peak Fest, and they have businesses set up at all of those usually. And you can go around and hand out business cards to people and talk to them and potentially find clients there as well. A lot of people at the Peak Fest definitely have Etsy stores already, and maybe they're looking to make a move over. So. Freelancing tools, these are some things that I use or have used, um, some good tools to kind of be your own everything. Uh, you can do it all by yourself. You can register your business using LegalZoom, which is what I did. It's really easy. Proposals and contracts and invoicing. I use Andco, it's a service by Fiverr, it's um, free. They basically, you can create a contract and proposal. You can set it up so there's a payment upon signing, and they automatically generate that invoice, and then you can generate an invoice at the end that will send out the rest of the payment. It's really great, and you don't have to pay to sign up. Um, Wave is another good accounting, um, accounting platform that's also, I can't say free. They, you know, for credit card charges, you're always going to get, I think it's like two. 0.9% plus 30 cents or something like that. Um, Shake Law is another one for contracts. There's, they have a premium one, but they also have a free service where you could just create contracts on it. Task management, again, I use, I use Andco. I, also, I use those three, really. Um, I use Evernote and Debuggle. Debuggle is really just specific task management. And co, you can create tasks related to all your projects if you're tracking everything in there. So it's sort of an all-in-one. And uh, Evernote, everybody's like, oh, well, Evernote's just, you keep notes in there. Honestly, you can do so much with Evernote. It's really, <laughs> it's really way more. You can save all kinds of stuff in there and, and track it with notebooks and tags. And it's a, definitely a great app to use. And taxes, I actually spoke about this earlier, Painless 1099. I love so much because I don't have a tax person. I do my own taxes uh, with an LLC. You know, you can claim that. You, that's your, claim that on your personal income tax. And with Painless 1099, it takes out, you route your money that you get paid by the client through this, and it puts taxes into a savings account, which it determines when you sign up. Or you could set your own rate for, you know, what you think you should be saving. I set mine right now at uh, twenty something percent to take out each time, just in case. You know, you could set it higher, just in case. It's really a good service, and I would definitely recommend it if you're doing your own taxes. No, that part you have to do yourself, but. You'll have all the money there at the end. And, you know, say you're, you don't want to do it anymore. I mean, it's, you just transfer all the money out. And, or you have access to it at all times. What they, use a, uh, they use a bank that they kind of route it all through called Lincoln Savings Bank. They have a routing number and, a, and an account number for you that you use. And it automatically goes there before they push out whatever's left to your account. Yeah, it's pretty awesome.
not just surviving, but thriving. Um, whew, thriving. That's what, that's what it's all about. Continued success, thriving as a freelancer in business. Keep going and going. The uh, Energizer Bunny. Going and going and going. Ask clients for a review or a testimonial. A lot of times they are happy to give out one to you, especially if you've provided really good service to them. Um, and that, going back to what I, stuff I said earlier, that's why customer service is so key, so you can get good reviews from your clients. Content creation. This is extremely important. Blog. You have a blog. Use it. Post as much as you possibly can about all kinds of stuff. People, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's design, development, SEO, you know, create a tutorial. Um, just post it. Post how to do this and, you know, anything, anything when it comes to WordPress, freelancing, create tutorials, create an ebook. Ebooks are great too. Um, make them free so that your clients can, or potential clients can get on there and get an ebook, and then hopefully they're signing up for your email list when they're trying to get that ebook, and then you can eventually <laughs> turn them into a client. Speak at conferences. What I'm doing right now. Definitely a way to uh, continued success, hopefully. LibertyCreative.com, remember, you can go and give me a contact. Shameless plug. Um, Put your logo or website on the bottom of your PowerPoint presentation. What? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Put, your logo on the bottom. Put the logo on it? Yeah, and your website. Yeah, but I'd be tweeting the shit out of you if I knew your name, but I forgot already. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a good point. Let's go back. It wasn't <laughs> My name's Kyle Laverty. <laughs> There's my logo. At Laverty Creative. You know, I saw a thing about don't put your logo across all your slides whenever I got an email about being a speaker, um, which is why I actually refrained from it. That's one person's opinion. I'll think about it. <laughs> if it's subtle. Right, it doesn't have to be quiet. <laughs> But now I wish I would have done it, so thank you for calling me out <laughs> on that. Well, you don't want to run afoul of the guidelines. Yeah, see, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. I guess what, the, what would the penalty have been? Yeah, you don't get to speak again? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Uh, Give current clients a referral bonus. This is a good one too. Um, you know, incentivize. It's a good way to potentially gain more clients as well. Go ahead. Any one of those, yeah. Um, those are all good possibilities, definitely. Um, yeah, maybe like a, a discount on something that they could use or discounted hourly rate. Maybe, maybe they're, you do maintenance for them and charge them a monthly. You could give them you know, a free month or something along those lines, stuff like that. Do you recommend doing any kind of pro bono work for the sake of marketing and getting yourself out there, or is that throwing good money after that? Uh, I mean, it depend, it's very dependent. Yeah, that's kind of, I would, I'd, I'm not going to recommend that you, that you do it one way or the other. That's, uh, it can be a good thing, I would say. Um, but definitely don't get caught in a place where you do too much of that. Be very selective in that area. Yes, so let's see. I, there was this website that I went to, um, Catch a Fire, maybe. They have a lot of, they have basically all pro bono projects. And uh, 
it's a lot of you know nonprofits that aren't trying to <coughs> dole out all kinds of cash to have a website. You can pick up projects and you know create a WordPress website for them. Um, I would say if you're doing that, it'd be good to already have another job going on while you're creating a pro bono website. But um, you know if I mean if you're able to do it and if if that's something you're open to just to put in your portfolio to show what people you can do, show people what you can do then you know by all means uh keep doing what you've been doing everything that i've said prior to this continue to do it to thrive and survive other than the failure slide don't don't do any of those things <laughs> leave that part out do the rest Avoid the things in the failures line. Sustainability, how to maintain it all. It's a balancing act. This is really important. Um, obviously, this morning at our keynote, that was a very good talk about kind of your overall health and, and just, you know, <laughs> keep your sanity. Take breaks. She's, she takes naps. That's great. You need to unplug for a period of time and get everything off your mind. It can be crazy as a freelancer, especially if you're taking on a bunch of work. You know, try not to do that as much as you can. Try to set a schedule for yourself, set specific hours. If you need help, get help. There's, you know, no reason not to get help if you need it. And it's just very important. A lot of people work themselves to the bone as a freelancer constantly, you know taking emails and calls all night, worrying so much about small things that they could just wait to the next day. You can, you can give it some time. Don't overload yourself. Don't sweat the small stuff, which, by the way, is a book, a really good book. Don't sweat the small stuff. It's all small stuff. I actually have it in my bag. It's a, it's a solid book. You can, if you have my slides, you can click the link. That's not a referral link or anything like that, by the way, so I don't get anything. But I just thought it was a good little plug because don't sweat the small stuff, definitely. I mean, keep your sanity. Um, it's, your mental health as a freelancer is very important. What to do now? Where do we go from here? Make it happen. Continue everything. Apply everything from here. Hope for the best. Learn along the way. Everything that I said, you know, you could apply it. You don't have to apply it. You could learn yourself. No matter what, it's going to be a learning experience regardless. And you're going to run into things that some people might not have run into before. You'll run into things that people have. And you can look up ways to figure it out or figure it out for yourself, but apply it all. Hopefully you have some su success. Questions? Uh, early on in the presentation, you said that yes, sir. one way for us, uh, or people who are interested, uh, to find new clients uh, was Google. Yes. It is vague, intentionally, because there's so many things you could search for to find different jobs and gigs that you're looking for. Um, I mean, you could type in WordPress followed by jobs, gigs, or careers and find a whole multitude of things. You could look up front-end developer gigs, jobs, stuff like that. <clears throat> it's sort of intentionally vague. I don't really have anything specifically that you should be searching. But it's just one potential way to sift through things and potentially find clients, even if it's contracting for another design agency, which I do a lot of. That's most of my work right now is not even my own clients necessarily. I mean, they are my clients, I guess you could say, but I'm contracting for them as you know, their developer or designer or whatever. So there's all kinds of stuff you could find just through Google without being too specific. Go ahead. Um, 
troubleshooting. Um, there definitely is. If you go to WordPress.org and go to the plugins, um, go to plugins from WordPress.org and search for whatever plugin it is that you're having a problem with. And they usually have a support link on there where somebody may or may not reply that is a plugin developer of that particular plugin. Just depends on what it is. It could be somebody that also uses the plugin. I don't that replies that has an answer, but you could go there. Um, it's the WordPress Stack Exchange. Though I don't know, you, I don't think you can do third-party questions on there for plugins and themes. But yeah, meetup groups are. Yes, there is. That's right. I have the. Uh, Triangle WordPress has a uh, Slack channel. Yeah, that's and, the Monday night one. Yeah. Thanks. And then I think there's one in the weekend. Yeah. I haven't been to that. But, I mean, because I'm having a lot of Yeah. 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 Okay. <coughs> Serverfaults.com. Let's see here. You know, there's a freelance. Actually, I'll, I'll show you at the happiness bar. That would be a better way to go about this. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Question about the Craigslist ad. What types of gigs have you received? Well, the, the, the guy that I talked to that had the webs.com problem was, was one. I think that was in uh, small business ads <laughs> where I posted that. Um, but you could get any multitude of things. It really just depends on, you know, the, the title of your ad is important. What you provide, that way, you know, you'll get those specific things. But you might potentially get something completely out of the ordinary. I mean, my ad didn't say anything about webs.com, but that's what I got. But I was open to it, and I helped him out, so... Mm -hmm. uh, so you look at clients, sometimes they try to lowball it. And they'll use kind of, uh, you know, just take it. Even though, I mean, I know you get your business. Yeah. yeah. How do you tell? Um... I would just say continue to stick to your guns, you know. You definitely keep I mean unless you're unless you're trying to charge something through the roof or something like that, but you know, I don't even know what would be con I mean, it's really all on how you value your time. I would I would just continue to stick with it and you know, dig dig your feet in and keep it going. Uh, 
I mean, I wouldn't, I'm not going to recommend against them. There's, you know, there's a lot of situations in some of those where maybe you're, you know, people are definitely undercharging a ton, so that kind of could cut you out. But at the same time, if you build a good, you know, if you build a good portfolio on there, you know, there's some good potential. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a good. Yeah, and you have to like pay for more chances to submit proposals or stuff like that. Um, honestly, I've never used any of those, um, so I I couldn't really tell you one way or the other with with Fiverr or um, you know the freelancer, Elance stuff like that. But um, when I was, I spoke at WordCamp Wilmington on a similar topic. It was becoming a WordPress freelancer, and one of the people in there, she is a designer, and she got a lot of really good business from one of those sites. I can't remember which one exactly, but she just went through the process of taking, you know, whatever tests that they had on there, and you know, was able to show that. Had a couple of clients that came to her through the proposals that she submitted, and then they eventually just turned into regular regular clients and she you know she wasn't charging something completely low either you know she was she had a good uh, you know she stuck to her guns on her rate instead of lowering it significantly to try and get business so and she ended up doing well Um, hmm. I mean, I was working as a developer for about two years before I decided to take freelancing full time. Um, and at this point, I was entirely self taught and I felt pretty confident that I could go off and do my own thing. And I would say, right out the gate, I definitely wasn't charging enough, obviously. Um, but I would say about four, four or so months in, I realized that I should definitely be charging a lot more than I was, without question. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Perhaps they can two grand a year. Yeah. So then five years, so then a feasible chunk out. Right up front, yeah. It's, it's really dependent on, I guess, your business model. And, That's what you know, I'm like, I mean, I've worked with so companies where they've charged a monthly price. And for, you know, website stuff like that, and I can't remember what that was exactly, but they charged monthly and clients were okay with that because they didn't have to shell out a bunch of money right, right off the bat or, you know. Um, but, you're floating down. Yeah. So yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Then you, yeah. yeah. That's just that you may be additive. Additive. And contracts at that point would be really important as well. Yeah. So. <laughs> what, how do they do that? Yeah. Uh, a couple of weeks ago in Atlanta, we uh, talked to my and his gig is to have a consistent bill for um, agreement with your client. You get a state loan thanks to me, and I think it's, I, I do that. One hundred percent. Yep. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's definitely one of the keys for sure to being a freelancer is recurring income, no doubt. Um, providing some sort of support slash maintenance plan for WordPress websites. You know, even as simple as keeping things up to date, fixing any issues that come about, and having backups and security and stuff like that. You know, people will definitely pay to just for those things. So on a monthly basis. <laughs> well, that <laughs> that's gonna be that's gonna be for you to decide. I would say, but there are plenty that you're going to want to avoid, I'm sure. Um, I can't, <laughs> I can't well, pin, I, I pinpoint anyone or another. regulated industries if you don't have expertise in that area. Yeah. Yep. Doctors. Lawyers. Well, no, anytime you're going to have to deal with HIPAA or, you know, those types of requirements, unless you're really skilled in that area, that's a lot more important. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> it's kind of tough if they're if I would say if they're starting off trying to get your rate lower, you know, you might want to raise a red flag then. Um, if right out the gate they're calling you a million times a day or sending you emails wanting this, that, and the other, it, depending on how that situation is unfolding, that could potentially be a red flag as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, extremes are what you want to red flag. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, that's a fun situation. Um, you know, content's always an issue, but uh, Elisa, who was in here before. She said that she gets the content, you know, up front and puts it all in and then designs around that. So get a deposit beforehand. They've already got money invested. They tend to yeah. The, um, well, no matter what, you should you should definitely have a you should have you should have an upfront payment no matter what. But yeah. I put a time limit on it. They don't get it to me within thirty days or whatever. It's my money. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, the contract is done. Yeah, I mean, I, you should definitely, there shouldn't, um, yeah, it, depending on the situation, but definitely you shouldn't be putting yourself in a situation where it's like, you know, money back. Um, you know, they paid for, they paid for what you provided thus far, and, you know, if they want out at that point, then that's, that's unfortunate, but, you know, it's a loss for them. Um, Sorry. Of course, uh, you know, do you invest a lot of time going to doing your own SEO? 
I do not actually. Completely organic for me. I don't. I don't pay anything or anything like that. I don't have an S. Yeah, yeah. Real quick, I think we have like a real quick minute. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Not necessarily. I do both. I charge hourly and I charge per project. It's just dependent on what it is. For stuff like a full blown custom website, I'm definitely going to charge a project rate, flat project rate, and they'll pay a certain percentage up front and then at the end before shipping their website. Um, and then for hourly well, stuff, it's... Well, that's a contract issue. Yeah. Define, you should define, you know, milestones within your projects. So that, that way they have something to go by and they can get you stuff. I think that's all we got, so thank you very much, everybody.